Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, August 6th with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Seguini. It's the first day of my new cue cards to help me through this. And Simon, That's first, not thing, help first thing on the list, Clint Dempsey, of course. He spoke to the media yesterday. So for the first time, we got Clint Dempsey's take on why and how all this happened. And it's what you'd imagine, Jason. He talked about timing being the key here uh, in that he really felt the itch to come back to the United States. He wanted his kids to grow up here in the United States. He felt he was successful enough in Europe despite not achieving that dream of playing in the UEFA Champions League. So he felt this time was right. But also, between the lines, you can tell he was very happy with the contract he received. Uh, and he said, sometimes you also got to think of yourself and your family. He did that in this case. Yeah, interestingly, he said that he hadn't spoken to Jurgen Klinsmann about this move. And I think a lot of people are holding on for that and waiting to hear Klinsmann's opinion now. Yesterday on ETR, though, you guys had Adrian Hanauer, who was helping to orchestrate this deal behind the scenes. What did he have to say? Adrian Hanauer was at that press conference. Uh, Clint Dempsey's press conference, but we got him exclusively on the show, and he went through some details. What's interesting to me is that uh, he says he needed some time to really be convinced that the investment was worth it. His co-owners were quickly on board with that. Eventually, he was convinced. Uh, number two, that there was not much of a technical analysis on where Dempsey would fit on the field. He says when you get a good player like Dempsey, you just fit him in, and good players are going to help you win games. And then at the end, that's the one that's most interesting to me. He says. If we can't win with this group, then so. That was telling. <laughs> that, that is telling. You can hear that on MLSsoccer.com slash Extra Time. Great interview on Extra Time Radio. One thing I want to mention, Grant Wall came out with an article yesterday in Sports Illustrated, really detailing all the behind the scenes of the Clint Dempsey deal. It's a great read. If you haven't read it, check that out. Of course, we're going to have plenty more coverage on the Clint Dempsey signing and everything that goes forward now leading up to his first game against Toronto this weekend on MLSsoccer.com. Well, the 2013-2014 edition of CONCACAF Champions League gets underway tonight, Simon. First team in action that I think a lot of American fans are going to be interested in is Club Tijuana out of Mexico. A lot of Americans playing there. Yeah, two Mexican clubs involved today. They are one of them, and it's going to be interesting. They have a lot of Americans, not only that are starters, but also that come off the bench. And you wonder how Tijuana is going to take this competition and whether we'll see the likes of Paul Ariola, ex-LA Galaxy Academy product, who's really been shining for them. He's coming off uh, the bench a few times and has played well. So that's a guy to look out for in the game tonight in El Salvador. And you mentioned the LA Galaxy. They signed Jaime Pineda, the Panamanian goalkeeper, uh, to a contract. This is interesting because this is clearly them bulking up ahead of the stretch run. Carlo Cudicini, their starting goalkeeper, but is Pineda maybe being brought in to um, help them in Champions League? Just in time for Champions League, Jason. But it's interesting to me, a lot of people are just assuming, okay, bye-bye Cudicini. I don't know where they're getting this. Uh, the LA Galaxy right now behind Cudicini have Brian Rowe and Brian Perk, two very inexperienced goalkeepers and a team that has the ambitions that the Galaxy has on multiple fronts, you need multi goalkeepers who have experience. Pinedo doesn't get any better than that in CONCACAF right now. So let me ask you this. Does that make the LA Galaxy the... the MLS team with the best chance to move forward in Champions League? I think they have now so many guys who have gone through it. Remember last year, they blooded a lot of young talent in the Champions League, and they performed very well. So I think LA is one of them. I think Montreal, as the tournament rolls on in the group stage, will have a home field advantage uh, up there in Canada. And then I also think Sporting Kansas City. All indications are they real, this really matters to them, this tournament, and their style of play, I think, can really take a lot of CONCACAF teams by surprise. All right, full coverage of CONCACAF Champions League can be found on MLSsoccer.com. Taking a look now at the Castrol Index update for this week. Leading the pack, Chris Wondolowski getting on the board twice against Chivas USA at home. And at number two, New England Revolution phenom Diego Fagundes. His team losing over the weekend, but he had a pretty good game. Number three, Jared Jeffrey, newcomer for DC United, had a solid outing in DC's win. Suni Saad coming in four. His team also losing, but that youngster, a great game for KC, uh, although missing a few shots. And Matias Laba, he did not miss. He's Toronto's DP, and he finishes at five, scoring his first MLS goal.
All right, taking a look now at the overall cash flow index through the month of July. And there are a couple goalkeepers near the top, and it starts with Donovan Ricketts from the Portland Timbers. Jason, at number two, Jack McInerney of the Union, not scoring goals of late, but he's still sticking at number two. Number three, the other goalkeeper you talked about, Nick Romando, RSL. Jason Christ says he's having his best year of his career. Number four, Marco DiVaio of the Montreal Impact. And at five, look out for Mike McGee of the Chicago Fire, making a run not only at the Castro rankings, but at MVP. And Mike McGee also preparing for the U.S. Open Cup semifinals. Tomorrow night, Chicago and D.C. United going at it. On the other side, it's Real Salt Lake and Portland. I think that's a game a lot of people are looking forward to. One more note I should mention, as we now know four more teams entering MLS before 2022, a lot of eyes on Orlando today as there is a big stadium vote going on. They're looking for $20 million in county aid here to get the stadium project going. It's a big day for them. All right, that's all we have. Don't forget to check out Extra Time Radio if you haven't already. We'll be back tomorrow with plenty more on The Daily.